Hey, hey, it's Eve Lalotte. I'm the On Purpose Entrepreneur, and I have the lovely Nicole S. Cooper here. And we're actually just having a little chat, and we want to invite you into our little conversation. We're talking about how to, um, you know, transition and um, explore options in the network marketing direct sales field. How to actually examine opportunities, how to know what the right fit is for you, how to know when you should make a shift and when you should make a transition that's in alignment with yourself. I know Ms. Cooper recently made that shift in alignment um, with a, a new company and I was just curious as far as the mindset, the thought process, the energy that um, took, that she took behind it in order to make that shift. So, Ms. Cooper, I know um, probably if you haven't been living under a rock, you know, for those who have, who don't know your background, would you give us like the short 30, 60 second intro? Yeah, so I recently, uh, I, I'm, I've been an internet marketer, been a network marketer for years, but I, I, I made a decision years ago to come back into internet marketing and I wanted to do it full time and I actually retired in my own mind, no real literal retirement, but I just made a decision. I was done with the industry um, and my goal and focus was internet marketing moving forward. And that was back in 2000 and about 10, 11 ish. Um, and got into internet marketing, online based opportunities and affiliate programs and I uh, grew them successfully. But as of within the last like year to 18 months, I just began to feel a hunger inside of me um, to do some things differently uh, that got me from behind the computer and actually working hands on with people. And I thought it would be coaching and speaking and all those things. Um, but as I began to launch these different coaching programs and working directly, a lot of my coaching clients, I saw that there was a gap there. And the gap for a lot of people was that experience that they would get in network marketing to um, learn what it means to really build a business leveraging someone else's platform. So long story short, after multiple conversations with coaching clients and really seeing that, that missing gap for them, I made a decision to come out of retirement and get back into the industry to work hands on with hungry entrepreneurs. I'm just showing them how to really build a business leveraging someone else's platform. So it's not 30 seconds, but that's the Cliff Notes version. Yeah, great, great. So let's unpack, you know, that whole transition period because you said you had a hunger, you had a, a stirring in your spirit that, you know, there was something more or there's something that you needed to shift. And like, how does one know how to act on that stirring? Like, how does one know to say, well, am, am, I, am I just being misguided? Am I lacking focus? Or is there something more that I need to pay attention to this desire? You know, I think, I think we all have hints and clues in, in just how we feel. Um, I know for me, I had no idea it was me getting back into the industry, honestly. I was totally in denial, and I said I would never do this again, and I meant it. Um, but what I found was that in all my creativity and in all my, my efforts to try to do other things, I, I launched these coaching programs, and they were great, but I just, it wasn't for money for me. It was to see people grow, and I kept finding the same people buying from me over and over again, and I appreciate earning the income from them, but I wanted to see them get results. Um, so I wasn't really happy with the outcome of the people that I was working with. I enjoyed them, but I was like, I, it had to be more of that. And then I wanted to speak and I started doing speaking events, but I would go to speak and that was it. It was like, people loved you. They clapped for you. Good job. You're great. And if they buy products from you, that's great. But that's the end of that relationship. And then I was getting into consulting and it was it was me becoming a glorified project manager and being very isolated. So it was all these combinations of things. And it really wasn't money driven at all. Um, it was very fulfillment driven. And I personally, I was just unhappy. And I began to feel miserable. And then I started realizing I was lonely. I was sitting in this house behind this computer all the time and just pecking away at the keyboard. And so for me, it was a feeling. It was paying attention to, to the response that I, my, I was just biochemically just physically just having in all of my attempts to do all these things. And it, it came up in a conversation one day, I was talking to a good friend of mine, Andrea, and I was launching this academy um, called the Online Biz Professionals Academy. And it was designed for me to teach people how to take their skills and build a business. And I told her, I said, you know, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. 
because I realized that my vision is so much bigger than me that I can't do this on my own. It's not going to be something that I can just, um, you know, put together. And be, it's great to do that, but I knew that I needed a team and I needed to be partnered up with other people. And so that just led me to finally, you know, when I was launching my recent coaching program, I said, I'm going to do this differently. I said, I'm not going to just put a bunch of PowerPoints together and just teach. Instead, I'm going to get on the phones with my coaching clients and figure out what do you really want to accomplish? And so instead of sending them to a sales page, I said, if you're interested in this coaching program, email me with your name and email address, I mean, your, um, with your, your, your phone number and your name and say, I'm in. And so I ended up getting quite a few 20 plus, 30 plus people responding. And I took the time and I got on the phone with them. And this was something that, although I had a strong presence on the internet, I must admit as an internet marketer, I got really bad about connecting with people physically because they teach you, you use systems to make money. You don't, you don't deal with people, no phones, no cold calling, no this, no that, right? Just create systems and sales funnels and get out there and build your list and sell them stuff. And I had created this perception that that's what I was supposed to do. So I started shielding away from the phones and shielding away from interaction. And when I got on the phone with these people, it felt so good. But what I loved is I was able to find out from them. I would ask them like, hey, what do you want to accomplish? And they had like a blank stare. They were like, you know what, Nicole, I just want to work with you. I just feel like you have so much to offer. I'm not tech savvy. I got that a lot. I'm, I followed you in everything you did, but I just want to work with you. And that's why I keep buying from you. I don't really know what I want. I just feel like you can help me get to where I want to be. And um, after multiple of those phone calls with people saying, you know, I, I want to be successful, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I took some time and just started reevaluating um, what that scenario, what was going on in that scenario. I had to kind of step away. And there was two things that happened. That same week where I was doing these interviews, I had a mentor here from Australia. And um, we, were, we spent a week together pretty much. And he and I, he was my consulting coach, and he and I began to talk about my goals and the things that I was good at. And he said, Nicole, let me explain something to you. He was like, you have to begin to look at business as assets. You, you want to remove the emotion out of it. And you want to take advantage of what you have in front of you to leverage to build out that asset. And he wasn't talking about any particular business. This was just his wise advice. He was like, you know, business, you, you, you build businesses to develop assets. And he was telling me how he would buy companies, build them, I mean, uh, launch companies, build them up, sell them off. But as he was saying this, I began to think about network marketing differently. And I began to think about the fact that I had this whole database of people who followed me for all these years as network marketers who came to me to learn how to be a network marketer. And I was telling them, no, I don't want to be that anymore. I don't want to do that business anymore. You come on with me. I'm going to show you how to launch your own business. And I just saw that big conflict there with what I wanted to do. And that's something else that he told me. He said, Nicole, because I told him what I wanted to do. I was like, I want to help people learn how to build successful business as an entrepreneur and start their own business. He said, but Nicole, everybody's not like you. He said, you want that for them, but they're not ready for that. He was like, most people think they want to be an entrepreneur until they realize what it takes to make it happen. And then they don't go anywhere with it because a lot of people need something to bridge them to that versus them having to create it themselves. And so that was one conversation. And then the other conversation was, was with a good friend that same night, me and my um, Australian mentor, we went to internet marketing party here in Austin. And I ran into um, some good buddies of mine who owned a previous internet marketing business I was in with um, uh, online. And I hung out with, with them and, and Brian and I were talking and he was like, Nick, what's going on with you? And I said, you know, I'm just in this funky place and trying to figure out what my next moves are going to be. And he was like, well, what's going on with you in the industry and network marketing? And I was like, you know what, B, I just feel like I'm done. And he just looked at me. He said, Nick, let me tell you something. He was like, you've built up too much influence in this industry to just walk away. He was like, you can't walk away. He said, there's so many people who look up to you. He said, even if you keep a business, a network marketing company in your pocket just for fun, to give people as a vehicle to help them who follow you, just do that. He was like, you don't have to be married to it. He said, but just put it in your pocket for fun. He was like, you're good at it. People respect you for it. They're following you because of your success and your results. He was like, just do it for fun. And that conversation totally changed my heart and heart about being in this industry and made me listen. And that's when I began to get on the phone with my network marketing friends and just say, hey, what's going on with you? How's it going? And all I kept hearing was, Nicole, I'm having so much fun. And that's what really inspired me to know I needed to make that switch and make that move. 
Okay, awesome, awesome. So just a just a kind of snapshot that you know you started having that stirring, having that desire. So you went on an exploratory adventure, built some courses, started communicating with the target audience who really wanted to work with you, and come to, come to find out that they just really wanted to partner up with you, but they didn't necessarily want to go off, create, branch off and start an entrepreneurial journey from scratch, right? So the, you wanted to give them an opportunity to partner up with you, something kind of like, um, you know, a business in a box, which the network marketing industry offers. Um, and from there, you're finding that, hey, this is, this is how people are able to partner up with me, but also start gaining the skill sets of network marketing plus have fun doing it without feeling constricted or feeling like a burden with all the heavy load of you know technical stuff that network marketing there is a learning curve don't let people fool you there is a learning curve that you have to go over but with network marketing you know it's stuff that you're doing already right you're connecting with people already you're just doing it in a structured way and so you found that this is what's working best for you now the thing is is that um, with all the time that you spent online and now you just like turn on a dime, right? Like you, you've been preaching this message of, hey, do your own thing, um, leverage the internet marketing space. How are you, how is that message being conveyed moving forward or have you stopped that messaging? Have you merged it? What is the new messaging from yourself now as far as, you, you know, your stance? I just love you as an interview. You're amazing. Great question. Um, yeah, you know what? My messages stay the same. Um, it, it is doing you and it's knowing, it's, it's honoring and owning your own voice in whatever it is that you do and not compromising who you are, what you do to try to blend in with everyone else. So the way that this has worked for me in network marketing, even coming back into the industry now, I actually have a totally different approach. Um, you know, coming back now, I am spending more time with my team. I am investing in them. I am um, getting on the phones and, and, and really helping to develop strategy to help individually identify with the people that I bring into the business what their blueprint is. I give them and, 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 and give them that time up front um, to help them come up with a plan. Now, whether they follow it or not is up to them. But in coming back into this industry, I'm coming back with my own message and voice. And my message and voice is teaching people how to become six-figure entrepreneurs leveraging someone else's platform. I've always taught people how to do that. It was just through whether we talked about network marketing or affiliate marketing or these other vehicles. I've always talked about developing skill sets. I've always talked about positioning yourself to generate income from different sources or leveraging somebody else's platform to create their income. So everything actually remains the same, but I just created that own little messaging in this company that I'm in now. So. You know, although it's a health and wellness company and people are talking about a lot about the products from a marketing standpoint, I still kept my same messaging of I built the CEO tribe, which stands for creating entrepreneurs and opportunities, because even in working with my team in this environment, I'm coaching them the same way I was coaching people as a coach outside of a company. I'm still investing in people and showing them, listen, these are the different phases of entrepreneurship. Here's some key things you need to understand. Here's the specific skills you want to know. Internet marketing is powerful. But one of the things that has switched in my message is using internet only. Before, I was a big advocate about internet, 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 do everything on the internet. Now, my whole messaging has switched to be balanced. Leverage the internet. You can get people in business online, but you can keep them in business by building relationships with them offline. Now, I'm still building a team all around the world, so it doesn't mean that I'll be sitting in people's living rooms, but it does mean I'll do more Google Hangouts and connect with my team, do more coaching group calls. I'll get on the phone a lot more with people. I'm doing traveling and going to different cities. So I am switching my message, or shall I say, maturing my message, because I think a lot of the things that I was saying before was based on my immediate circumstances. Now I've had a chance to step back and look and see what others have done that worked, and the funny thing is, Eva, here's something else that I learned. And this is what I um, learned from my consulting uh, coach um, from Australia. We began to talk about some of the biggest earning internet marketers. And I'm talking the Frank Kearns, the Mike Phil Sainz, the Brandon Bichards, the, you know, the, the Russell Brunson's. A lot of these guys, well, not Russell per se, um, but the Mike Phil Sainz, the Frank Kearns, and the Brandon Bichard. 
And what I discovered is although these guys are like the king of the internet and what they do, they build their businesses offline. You know, if you look at the network that they connect to, the masterminds, getting into Joe Polish's $25,000 a year mastermind, which is about to be $100,000 a year. These people are buying into that network to go meet in Arizona and these different places to get together with each other and build those relationships. But this is not the stuff that we, we've been taught, right? We all talk about, oh, it's all about making money online. And so for me, I don't see it as switching my message. I see it me being maturing in my message to say, you know what? That worked for that season. Guys, here's the deal. Even me, my last company I was with, I had a thousand people in the business. But only five made more than five figures out of a thousand people. Why? Because a lot of times people are at home struggling on their computer all alone and they give up because they don't feel like they have that camaraderie because it's just them and a computer screen. So that's kind of how I've merged my message and also transformed and matured my message um, to make it a, a collaborative effort of the, 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 the vision and ideas that I had before, along with being back in the industry and, the, and that same vision and ideas working in this environment. You're muted. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Let me see. You there? No. We can't hear you. What happened? Are you on the earpiece or something? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I still can't hear you. What happened? You wanna log out and log back in? And just come back into that same, yeah. Log out of the Hangout and come back in. So so exit the Hangout and then come back in. Yeah, go ahead and log off, <clears throat> exit out, and come back in. I can't hear you, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so she shall be back. Awesome, awesome. And while she's coming back, uh, excited to have this conversation. So just wait till she comes back. she will come and return. Too bad we don't have a pause button here on the hangout. But, okay, she's coming back now. Awesome, awesome. Okay, Eva, I see your face. Can you hear me now? Yay! Sorry about that. I don't know what, I think I pressed mute and it got stuck. Oh, it's okay. okay. Yeah, that works. All right. Okay, so, so Nicole, one of the things I can't see your picture, so I don't know that. Don't you can't see my picture, or you, you don't? See I can't see your face. Is that on purpose? No. Also, can't we see your face. Work. We'll just keep talking. Okay, so one of the things that um, I'm curious about is, you know, you've made a decision to go ahead and make a little, make a shift, but you know, did you have any reservations about the opinions of? some of your colleagues in the industry, about your team, about, you know, some of the opinions in the marketplace as far as, you know, what does this mean for your brand or how you are as a leader to, you know, stop one company and transition to another. Did those, did that fact, you know, was there any reservations with that? Oh, God, yes. Tons. A million and gazillion. Um, and, okay. and it was a lot of, it was a lot of internal fears. Um, what will people think? What will they say? Um, you know, how would this look? And I've had many a conversations where a lot of friends begged me not to do it because they felt like it would batter my brand. 
Uh, and here's here's the conclusion that I came up came up with. And, and I didn't quit the other company. I just added something else because in the other company, I really haven't marketed for like a year because I felt like I couldn't do what I needed to do to help people succeed. So I hadn't necessarily been out there just promoting and building that business. I actually froze because I got stuck with why aren't people getting results, right? So um, in that process, I dealt with conversations. I actually reached out to the people that I, that I felt um, I owe them the respect to let them know that I was making this move. Um, and, and of course, I got opinions and I got um, suggestions and recommendations and people saying, but, you know, people talking about that tarnishing your image. But here's what I had to understand, Eva. There's nothing greater than knowing who you are. And I knew that I wasn't making a move. I, this isn't my typical cup of tea. I'm not the person to jump from one thing to the next. I'm not the person that hops on bandwagons. I'm not the person to do what everybody else is doing. I am very sound in the decisions that I make. And I'm very wise in the moves that I make. And although this was something that I never, ever thought I would do, I mean, literally a week before I said yes to doing this, I was so against it. I was on the phone with people like, yeah, I'll support everybody over there, but I have no interest in getting back in the industry. Um, and when I finally what got- that, was, was that reservation from a bad taste in your mouth from previous? Was, what was that like hesitation to even consider that option previously? Like, I think previously I got burned out because I had I had different expectations for network marketing. Um, the the business that I was in before I became an online marketer was like the first company that I had like major success in, and the business grew so fast. I started off in I think April or March. And by August or September or maybe October, we had 10,000 people on our team. And I was an internet marketer. I had just learned, I had built that whole business on the internet. And this was an offline based business. And so in my mind, I thought I can teach everybody in my team to do what I was doing. And it was a disaster. It was like a tug of war because I was trying to make everybody internet marketers when this was an offline based business. And it just created a lot of conflict. Um, because people were hearing too many mixed messages and I began to feel like I was the blame because I was an internet marketer trying to do a traditional business. And so that's where the burnout came from. It was frustration because I had to make a, a decision to get offline and do what everybody else was doing. And at that time I didn't want to do that. I had a brand new baby. Um, and I had, I, I made over a hundred thousand dollars in the first couple of months in this company without getting offline. So to me, getting offline was kind of stupid. It was like, if you made all this money off online, why would you go do what everybody else is doing? And I felt forced to try to convert to traditional methods when I had my success from online. So that was the conflict. It was the fact that I was an internet marketer trying to do an offline business and I didn't want to be having conflicting messages against what the team was teaching. So that was before. What made the difference this time was realizing, like Nicole, the internet is great, but it's, it does not it does not replace human interaction. You being online cannot replace connecting with live human beings. And and I began to feel like a prisoner in my own office. Um, so I desired to connect with people. I started looking forward to leaving my house. And when I would go out to events, a lot of my friends would tell me now, all you talked about was the fact that you were miserable and you needed to get out of the house and you were so happy to be at a happy hour with us or happy to be working out with us because you didn't have a life. So I craved and desired the human engagement. So coming back into it this time, I'm looking forward to connecting and I'm looking forward to building people and I'm looking forward to all the other pieces. And I believe that's what's made the difference of my re-entry. I'm not opposed all the, look, I talked a lot of mess about offline traditional. I got hangouts out there like, I ain't doing no hotel meetings. I'm not going to be doing no three-way calls. I don't have time for that. And that's because I was thinking it's all about the internet until I got lonely and miserable. And I was like, you know what? There's nothing wrong with a great conversation with somebody who's just like you, looking for the same things you were looking for when you first got started in the industry. And so I had to die to my ego. I had to die to my, um, all the words. I had to eat my own words. And, and I made that decision to get back in. So that's that piece of it with coming from being burned out before to what's different now. But on the other flip side of that, with people's opinions, you know what, Eva, I just had to get to a place to say, who's over here cutting checks to me? Who's over, who's calling me saying, hey, Nick, you all right? I'm going to come get you. We're going to go hang out. Who's, who, there's a lot of people have a lot of opinions, but we got to live our own lives. And when it comes down to, you know, tarnishing your image, 
I'm like, look, if you follow me long enough and you know who I really am, then that means you know that I make decisions that are based on some level of wisdom or alignment with an assignment and a vision. If I lose you because you feel like I'm hopping or jumping or you feel like I've tarnished my brand, then goodbye. Because I'm not trying to live for the approval of people. I'm trying to live a life of pure fulfillment and satisfaction and joy. And I'm going to do and own what I feel is best for me. So in all of that, I had resistance and fear about people's opinions at first. And I was like, screw them. Like, nobody's coming over here cutting checks, paying bills, mowing the lawn, dropping the kids off to school, or making sure that I am happy. I have that own choice within me to alter what I don't like. And I've had a list of things I hadn't liked for the past 18 months to two years, and I had to do something about it. And I did. And the funny thing is, now that I've made that decision, people are sneaking around like, hey, Nick, I, you know, I see what you're doing. You, and so many people have told me this, Eva. They say, you look so happy now. You look like you're in your element and you look like you made the best move. And they, they can feel it coming from me because it's a whole new energy that I had lost. And I just, I felt like it's a store. Right, right, right. So I know you're a busy woman, but I have one last question for you. And that's advice for that individual who is on the edge, who, you know, want pretty much needs permission to actually step up to their full potential and and you know seek something that's actually going to you know benefit them financially but also give them that that outlet to walk in their full alignment walk in their purpose do something that's more congruent with themselves how do you di how do you help them discern between being focused and actually taking advantage of a new opportunity that's a great question so okay there is a very good goal to be focused. That's a great goal. However, if you find yourself going in a direction that something's not working, you have to surrender to change. Because I think sometimes we get so stubborn about what we want to see that we try to force things to happen. And what I will suggest for the person that's watching this is number one, you have permission to change anything you want in your life. Life is about seasons and change is essential. And when you stop changing, when you stop growing, you're going to die. Now, people have a great um, intention to try to tell you what is best for you, but you have to learn to listen to the spirit within and, and honor that voice that's saying, you know what, we got to do something differently. And what I've discovered is opportunities present themselves in its perfect timing to help you make the necessary decisions to have to pivot, right? Pivot is a big word in business. There's moments where, and, I, and I've been in the startup community, there's moments where companies have spent years trying to build out an idea and they realize it's not gonna work. And they find something else that they make a decision to pivot to and it takes off. You have to be able to understand, and I, and I said this this morning on a call, none of us are here permanently. We all have a certain time frame in which we're to be on this earth. And we are here to, to fulfill a purpose, to create a level of impact. And what you're going to discover is that there's going to be seasons where things are going to be great and seasons where things are going to change. And you have to know when it's time to make that switch for you so you can start going in the direction that's going to help elevate you to that next level where you want to go to in life. Because, guys, listen, opportunities will continue to present themselves that even though you don't know how it's going to lead you where it's supposed to be, it's going to fall in alignment with that bigger vision. If you would just yield and surrender and be willing to take risks, step out there, try something. I'm somebody all my life I've tried everything because I've learned that the process of elimination and experience gets you closer to what you truly want to do versus trying to sit back and make sure you make the perfect decision and don't do anything at all. So I will say get out there and try stuff and stop living for other people. Stop trying to, do, to, to, to be so influenced by the opinions of other people. Les Brown said it best. He said, don't let other people's opinions become your reality. That's good or bad. Because people might love me, but they feel like I should be doing something else that they think is a good fit for them that I don't see in my vision. So I will say, guys, step out there and take risks and stop living for everybody else and live for you. Stop. The moment you stop worrying about what other people think is the day you truly obtain and accomplish freedom. And therefore, whatever it is that you desire, you have permission to go and do. You have permission to change. You have permission to change your mind. You have permission to shift gears 
and you have permission to not do what everybody else wants you to do. So if you needed that permission, guys, I'm giving it to you here. If you feel it in your heart, guys, the greatest thing you can do is listen to your, your voice, your spirit within. It will guide you to where you're supposed to be. And know that God does not make a mistake with any of us. You know, we can't mess up God's plan for our life. We can just walk into what he's, he's allowed to happen in our lives and trust and believe that it'll all unfold and get you closer to where you're supposed to be. And that's what I feel that has happened for me. Because everything I've been working on, Eva, by itself, from the coaching to the info products to the training to this, that, and the other, it's all come together right where I am right now. And will it last forever? Maybe not. But it was the best move for me in this season to help elevate me and re re-inspire me to go even further and impact more lives in an even greater way in this moment that I needed for it for today. And that's all that matters to me. Now, what happens tomorrow? I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to take advantage of today. So I hope that helps. Oh, that's an amazing answer. You know, so many people are like afraid to experiment, afraid of other people's opinions, afraid of what, you know, family, friends, colleagues might say, and they don't take advantage of the opportunities or they will self-sabotage themselves and get stuck in a rut and not do anything with the opportunity available to them. So I think you gave an amazing answer. Thank you so much for taking the time to just, you know, kind of clarify things. You know, there's a lot of buzz in the marketplace about, you know, what's Nicole doing and, you know, what's what's their next move and what was the what was the mindset around it? and I think you really clarified that for us all. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to connect with Miss Cooper, she is at you can reach me at uh, joinnicolescooper.com. You can click the link below, or you can find me at nicolescooper.com. And I will just end off with this, um, Eva. I just want to share this one little word of advice. Guys, live your life with experiences versus regret. You don't ever want to end the, get to the end of your life and say, I regret trying this, or I regret doing this. But instead, go out there and explore it and try. And you can always say that if you tried something, even if it doesn't work out, it got you one step closer to where you were supposed to be. So thank you so much, Eva. Um, if you guys want to connect with me, you can click the link below. Or reach me over at uh, joinnicolescooper.com. And Eva, I am so excited about you. I know you have a lot of things on the horizon. What if somebody wants to know how to get a hold of you? Uh, oh, you can visit evavalot.com. It's Y V A R. Last name, B-E-L-O-T-T-E dot -E com. All right. Well, thank you so much, Eva. Thank, thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.